Hey everyone, this is Brian Marino with Apex Software. And in this video, I'm going to go over drawing a land sketch using the survey module in Apex Sketch version 7. Before I get started, if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Also, if you know anyone who would be interested in this, feel free to like, share, and or subscribe so you don't miss out on any updates. But with all that out of the way, let's get into creating a sketch using the survey module. So what I have pulled up on the screen here is an example of what we're going to draw today. So in this survey, it has calls to the point of beginning. It also has a curve in the land sketch. So we'll kind of go over those details as well as a few other things. But what we will use to create this sketch is the deed calls at the bottom left of the image. So I'm just showing the image so that you have an idea of what it will look like. But we're actually going to use the legal descriptions at the bottom left to create it. So in order to get started sketching a survey in version 7, the first thing you're going to want to do is go click on the survey tab at the top of the program. When you click on survey, you'll have three options under the survey tab. The one we're going to use first is draw survey. So when I click draw survey, you'll notice my cursor popped up in the middle of the screen and then there's a panel on the right that's going to allow me to enter calls into it. On the left side here, there is a draw survey mode as well or a draw survey button as well. But I use the tab because I know I'm going to have to offset my point of beginning in this sketch. So I just proactively went to the survey tab versus just quickly clicking the draw survey button here on the left. There is no right or wrong way to do it there. Again, I just did it for this example to save a little bit of time. So in order to get started, I'm going to click anywhere in the drawing port after I click draw survey and you'll notice the cursor turns green and now my panel here on the right is active. So I can start entering distances and directions or calls into that panel. So looking at our first call, it's actually a call to the point of beginning and it is due north 50 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and tap enter since we already have north highlighted and I'm going to leave degree minute second blank so I'm just going to tap enter to skip through them and east west doesn't matter since we're going due north so I'll just leave it on west and tap enter and then the distance is 50 feet and then I'll tap enter and then enter again so there's our our uh, line going due north 50 feet the next call to the point of beginning is 20 feet due east so I'll just leave it on north we'll go 90 degrees enter to east and then distance is 20 feet so I'll go ahead and type in 20 and tap enter second enter will place the wall and we have our calls to our point of beginning so our piece of land starts where the green cursor is now this is done a lot of times if you have an existing parcel and you want to draw one next to it it gives you the distance to go to to start that next parcel so this is what this is displaying so at this point i want to offset my pob so that my point of beginning is where my cursor is so i'm going to come up under the survey tab and i'm going to click on offset pob and i get a pop-up the two calls have been offset so you'll notice that the lines now change to dotted lines and my cursor is now at the end of it so that's where my point of beginning is that's where I'm going to start my new sketch. So our first call here is north 44 degrees, 44 minutes, 20 seconds west at a distance of 143 feet. So we'll go ahead and start with north. So I'm going to just tap in on my keyboard and it'll select north for me automatically. And then it's 44 degrees, enter, 44 minutes, enter, 20 seconds, enter, west so i'm just going to tap enter for west or i could tap w on my keyboard and then the distance is 143 feet so 143 i'll go ahead and tap enter and when i tap enter it highlights the apply button at the bottom right corner of that panel and then the second time i tap enter it'll actually draw the line for me now you'll notice the dimension labels are kind of small right now we will adjust those at the end land sketches or a lot larger than typical residential sketches some parcels of land are bigger than others so a lot of the times you're probably going to have to go in and adjust your dimension sizes after so i'll kind of go over that once we get the area closed so the next call is actually a curve so a, a curve with a radius of 200 feet central angle of 26 degrees four minutes 10 seconds a cord which bears north 58 1746 east at a distance of 91 feet so in order to draw that the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to hit c on my keyboard for curve and you'll notice on the right side there it popped up uh the curve panel and it says left 
I'm going to leave it on left. It's actually a right curve, but I'm going to use left because I want to show you how to fix a mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and tap enter for left. And then the radius of this is 200 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 200, tap enter. I'm going to leave this blank. So I'm just going to enter through this and I'm going to enter the distance, which is 91 feet. So I'm going to type in 91, tap enter. And then is this tangent or not? So tangent is a smooth curve that doesn't have a sharp corner. In this case, it's not. If we did yes for tangent, it would not allow us to enter the degree, minute, seconds, or the bearing that we want to enter. So if you have a bearing, go ahead and hit no for tangent, and that way it'll allow you to enter your bearing. So I'm going to go right arrow to highlight no, and then I'm going to tap enter. And now I can enter my degrees, minutes, seconds, all that good stuff. So in this case, it's north. 58, 17, 46, east, and my second enter should draw it. Now you'll notice my curve is curving the wrong direction. If you remember the image, it actually curved outward, not inward. So I made a mistake here. I should have done a curve to the right, not to the left. So the way we're going to fix that, if you make any mistake, if you tap delete on your keyboard, it's not going to delete the wall. What you're going to do is click the undo button right here at the top left and it'll remove the last call you did and then we can re-enter it so i'm going to go ahead and hit c for curve again and this time i'm going to select right radius of 200 we'll leave to degree minute seconds blank our arc length or our distance is 91 feet it's not tangent and the bearing is north 58 17 46 east and then apply so that's actually the direction we wanted our curve. So just to reiterate, if you enter a call incorrectly, go ahead and click the undo button at the top left and that will undo your last call and then you can re-enter it. So now we're ready to move on to our next. So the next wall is south, 18 degrees, 40 minutes, nine seconds east at a distance of 145.52. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap S on my keyboard for south, 18 degrees. 40 minute, nine seconds. I'll arrow over to east and tap enter, and it's a distance of 145.52. Go ahead and tap enter, tap enter a second time, and there's our line. Now you'll notice now we have a, a call to the point of beginning, which is slightly different than our last call we have. I like to enter the last call exactly as it is. Um, you could click close track there on the right or tap A on your keyboard and it'll auto close to what you see there on the screen. But I like to go ahead and just enter the last call and if it happens to not close when I enter the last call, I'll click the close with error button on the right side here to close it with error and it'll give you a degree of error for that closure mistake. A lot of times deed calls won't close and so that's why we have this option and you really wanna enter that call because if anyone's reviewing this and they're like, well, why is that last call different than what we have here? Um, that way everything's gonna match and you don't have any issues. So for this last call, it's south. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap S for south and it's 63 degrees. 53 minutes, 50 seconds, west 25.27, and then I'll tap enter, one more enter, and it actually closed for us. And we can see now in the middle, we have an area name, site, subject site, and also a calculation of 0.2 acres. All right, so I'm gonna zoom back out so we can see everything. Now, the next step I would take at this point is I would clean up my dimension labels, make everything visible. So the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna come to the Home tab, and I'm just gonna click on Select All, and then I'll come here to my size, and we'll make it about a 28. And now we can clearly see all of our dimension labels, so I'll just kind of select them move them a little bit away from the wall just to make them look a little cleaner and now we have all of our calls visible as well as our area name and the acreage is visible as well the 0.2 acre here by default anything less than one acre it'll show square footage there is a setting to always show acreage so if you want it to always show acreage even if it's less than one if you come up to tools 
go to options under the modules tab here right here at the bottom display calculations as acres always or it only if greater than whatever number's in here. So in this case, it's one. So I have it set to always. So that's why I'm showing 0.2 acres here and I'm not showing a square footage for that label. So that's how you can adjust that if you need to. So I think that covers it all. Again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you know anyone who would be interested, feel free to like, share, and or subscribe. Otherwise, I will catch y'all in the next one.